Have you ever wondered why you shiver when you have a fever and then sweat when it ends? In this video, we'll learn why that happens. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome to Bite Size Medicine, your go-to channel for short, easy to understand videos about the common medical topics that matter to you. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, get involved in the comments, and check out the description below for links and resources. Let's get started. In the previous video, we learned about the mechanisms our body uses to maintain its core temperature, whether it's generating heat or losing heat. In this video, we'll learn how our body knows when to activate those mechanisms and how this process is affected when we have a fever. The reason our body knows when to activate and deactivate the temperature regulation mechanisms that we previously learned is because it has a set point of what a normal temperature is, and any deviation from that set point will trigger the mechanisms. This set point is controlled by a region in our brain called the hypothalamus. It receives temperature signals from our entire body and checks to see if those temperature signals match the set point. If the temperature signals are below the set point, the hypothalamus activates the heat generating mechanisms until it receives a new signal that the temperature is back up to normal. On the other hand, if the temperature signals are above the set point, the hypothalamus activates the heat loss mechanisms until it receives a new signal that the temperature is back down to normal. Let's use a real world example to help explain this process. This process of temperature control is just like the heating and air conditioning systems in a house. You start by setting your preferred room temperature with your thermostat. If the temperature increases beyond your preferred temperature, the air conditioner senses this and turns on. It continues to cool the air until the sensor determines the room is back to your preferred temperature. And if the temperature decreases, the heating system senses this and turns on and continues to heat until the room is back up to your preferred temperature. This is exactly how the hypothalamus works by turning the temperature regulation mechanisms on and off. It's our body's thermostat. Fevers are one of the ways our body tells us that there's something abnormal occurring, and it's also one of the strategies our immune system uses to fight infections. When we have an infection, like bacteria or a virus, they release various molecules into our blood. The cells of our immune system recognize those molecules, and a whole cascade of steps occurs, which eventually tells the hypothalamus to increase the set point of our body temperature. Now, if we were originally at our normal temperature, but the set point was just increased, then our hypothalamus now thinks we're below the set point, so it activates the heat generating mechanisms, such as shivering, to raise our body temperature. This is why we shiver and have chills during a fever. And our body does this because the increased temperature is one strategy to help kill the infection. Once the infection is finished, all of those molecules are removed from our blood and our set point goes back down to normal. But our actual body temperature is still increased, so this is recognized and the heat loss mechanisms, such as sweating, are activated to bring our temperature back down to the set point. If you found this concept interesting, I encourage you to do some further learning on your own. Perhaps you can find the answer to this question. Why are aspirin and steroids used to reduce a fever? Let me know in the comments what you find. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, have any questions, have a personal experience in this area that you'd like to share, or have ideas for a future video. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for another delicious bite of medicine.